This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Previously on Back to the Story. Did you say your hand? Oh, suddenly things are all making a whole lot of sense from what that man last time said. Hi there. Hello. I'm called the Old Witch. At first you think it's some sort of, something like a spell scroll, something you can use to cast something. But this one is used to make an arcane focus. And with a natural 20, the power that this arcane focus, if made, could probably rival gods. (laughs) So, uh... (laughs) Coming back in, you guys have rested the 12-hour journey of the lift going back up, landing in the ruins before you. You see the gate and the four Cardon sentinels that are in their alcoves. The gate is currently closed once more. You can still see through the bars. Can we reach the thing we have to hit from this side? Not on this side. Uh, is there a sign of another lever? Another, another lever? Uh, looking around, it looks like the uh, windows are on the other side. It's kind of an entrance in. Can I see? Well, I don't know if I need to see it. How far away is the... Uh, if you're standing at the edge of the gate, maybe 35 feet to a window. Uh, 35 feet, just out of range of mage hand. Uh, how some... far apart are the bars? Uh, they're maybe about this far. However far that is. I can't see because my That's a, a hand's width. A hand's length apart. I'll go I'm gonna turn into a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> turn into a squirrel. Run through the bars and I'll go over to the window and if I can't push the lever as a squirrel, I'll turn back and grab it. Okay. Sure. Okay. So you push. Yeah, you push the letter lever. The gate opens up once more, allowing your friends to move through the gate closing behind you. The sentinels unmoving still. Continuing on, you guys eventually have to work my way backwards because that's how things work. Ruins. Uh, you guys re-enter into the mines. You remember... Tracking through those mines, you see, luckily you guys left the paint splotches along the walls. You see the trail that led to that ravine where the red-eyed insects were, and then into the dark mantle room. You saw where there's still the husk of a few of the dark mantles lying on the ground. You notice as you move through, some of these corpses look to be torn apart. Even though they're burnt to a crisp, they seem to be torn apart by something feasting upon them. Leading back into the... So you guys have exited the ruins of the Umbach uh, civilization, have moved through the mining tunnels, through the Dark Mantle Room, and have now entered into where the uh, mines lead into the river and then to the lake that she fell from the ceiling in. There was something swimming in it last time, so eyes on the water. Oh, um, before we get to this can I look over that dragonborn body and see if he has any like identifying markers of like maybe a temple he was a part of or something like that? Sure, make an investigation check. Or actually, give me a religion check. Okay, it's more better apt. at that. Way better at that. Dirty twenty. The breastplate is bent and broken in, but on, upon it you do see the symbol of the dragon head in a diamond, the symbol of Akashan, the dragon god. Okay. Does he have anything I can take back with me? Maybe? There's a few scales. Uh, looking over with a 20, you see there was a holy symbol wrapped around where his arm once was. The chain has been broken, but the symbol mostly seems intact. Uh, I'll take that and one of the scales. Okay. Take it to get back. Okay. That brings you back up into where the large lake is, the hole in the ceiling. The water is still and dark. So, spiders? Spiders. Ball, you okay with me making you smaller for this? Sure. Should be fun. 
Okay. All right. And I'm just looking over spiders again. Crap, what challenge rating are they? I think I can only summon two, but I just gotta look it up. Two is how many you summoned last time. Yeah, because they are challenge rating one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So Can the spiders get... be an elevator where they like go to the top, then they spin their web down, and then we like. I'm being too imaginative. I mean, the first ones up can probably take a rope, and then someone wants to climb. I mean, we couldn't really find something to attach it to last time. We had to have Ball hold it. But anyway, I summoned some fey spirits into spiders. I think it's better if we don't swim out into the center of the lake to climb up anyway. Yeah, we'll just stay close to the wall and have them go up the wall to the ceiling. And how long do they last? Up to an hour. Okay. Uh, so I'll say each spider can probably only hold one person at a time, but they can carry and kind of ferry you, I guess the idea, um, up the wall, hanging upside down, and then into the crack. Is that the idea? Yeah. Okay. Um, and are these large spiders? They are large creatures. Okay. Yeah. They're going to have a hard time squeezing in the crack with you, but they can certainly try to help. So we'll say, who wants to go first? Maybe we should send Ball up first. So that way, in case something goes wrong, he can go up there with the rope and we can, if we have to swim and repel Pup. Then he can He's go. also a pretty good climber. Yeah. Right, I do have my climbing gear as well. I'll go with him. Uh, how long does Enlarge Reduce last? Good question. Ten minutes. Uh, is that, that enough time to right. get up there on the spider? Yeah, he'll be cutting close, but you should be able to do it in ten minutes. Um, so uh, as you, if it's if it's not, I can get ball up there literally instantaneously. Oh right. So if you guys want to go up first, and then maybe have a rope at the crack, and then spiders just get ferious up there. Sure, I will <laughs> grab ball and I'll dimension door us up. But you still need him small for that. Smaller. Yeah, he needs to be my size or smaller. Yeah. Okay, so then I will cast reduce. So he becomes five feet tall. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And okay. then I'll put my arm around the short five foot tall ball and dimension door him up to that little room area above where the crack was. Yeah. And ball in this stature kind of looks like a very big dwarf. But as you put your arm around him and dimension door, what does that look like as you cast that, Amson? So I'm going to say that Amson puts his arm around ball. And says, uh, now, Ball, I have no idea how this is going to feel. I've never done it before. So let me know if you feel uncomfortable. And he's going to snap his fingers and this, like, purple swirl of light will come in. And then they'll, like, shrink into a little singularity. And then they'll pop into existence up at the top. And then he'll, Amson will, like, look around and brush himself off and look at Ball. Oh, that was interesting. That was badass, I say from the other side. And as soon as it seems like, I don't know, like 30 seconds have passed, I will drop Reduce. Okay. So Amson and Ball are now up in the, um, immediately up in the hallway itself. Everyone else, as you guys are being ferried along by spiders, give me an athletics check at, at, at advantage once you get ferried up to the crack and are climbing up. And just in case, Ball will set the climbing rope up, in, you know, in preparation okay. of if something bad happens. Okay. So Vesper, that's fine. Ezekiel, that's fine. Eleven. Okay. Melly, that's fine. And Ezekiel, did you turn into a spider yourself? No, I meant to roll as me. I didn't realize I was clicking on the spider sheet. The bonus is actually, mine's one better than that. So. Okay, so you're fine. Uh, Melly, you're fine. 13, not a super hard DC. Ellery, as you're being ferried up by the spider, uh, this kind of carries you up to the top and you're working to scoot into the crack is kind of an awkward angle. And as you're trying to move, you slip, and shift, and begin to fall back. Give me a, I want to say a strength save to try to quickly grab oh. the rock. So that's going to be a straight roll. It's another 11. You splash into the water below. Fuck. And it ripples around you, the still, cold, dark water. What do you do? Remembering that Amson 
I think it was Amson, somebody felt something in the water last time we were down here. I call up, I'm going to need that spider again and start swimming to the shore. Okay. As you go and you begin swimming towards the shore, go ahead and give me an athletics check. Please be a little better this time. That was not a little better this time. That's a nine. Okay. As you're swimming, you feel something brush your feet. Fuck. As you get about halfway there, you feel something grab and pull down as you pl- uh, pull under the water. Give me a strength saving throw. Strength or dexterity saving throw, actually. Thank you for dexterity. That's a 12. You, it grips around you and pulls you underneath the water. Uh, I would like to cast Shock and Grasp on it. Okay. Which... Well, that's a better roll. That is a 23 to hit. Yeah, you hit. For eight points of lightning damage. Okay. You reach out and grab this scaled something wrapping around your foot, and you deliver a shock into it. There's a brief flash under the dark water, um, but it doesn't seem to be letting go. You feel it pulling you down further. You can now no longer see the water's too dark. Are any of us still being buried up? Are we, did we see this happen? Let's see. So I'll say, I'll do it in the order you guys rolled. So Vesper, you are already up. Um, Ezekiel, I think, was up. And then Ellery, Melly was still being ferried. But the rest of you can look down the crack and you hear her yell before she goes underwater. And you hear the splash. I jump down. Okay. Make yourself like a pencil thin as, as small as you can, diving down splashing into the water. You can see the ripples um, off to the side, but no Ellery. Uh, I'm going to dive underwater and see if I can find her. Okay, make a perception check for me. That's disadvantage because it's in the dark. 14. Okay. Um, You get a vague idea of where it's coming from as you hear thrashing and water moving towards the shore, but only about halfway there. Uh, I swim in that direction. Okay. You've been swimming in that direction. Ellery begins pulling you deeper. What are you doing? The water's getting colder as you're being brought further and further below. I am going to cast Shock and Grasp again. This time I'm going to use Sorcery Points, however many that takes to cast it as a bonus action. I think that's two Sorcery Points for that. Okay. So that I can do more than that. Uh, 16 to hit this time. Yes. Uh, that is 10 points of lightning damage. Okay. And for my action, I'm going to try and get this thing off of me. Okay, that's athletics or acrobatics to break the grapple. Okay. Uh, that's definitely acrobatics, by the way. 22. Yeah. So as you cast the shock and grasp, the scale serpentine or tentacle-like entity seizes up for a moment, long enough for you to unwrap it off of your leg and release yourself. And I am swimming back up and in the direction of what I think shore is. Okay. You begin swimming up. You're still underwater at the end of your movement. Okay. Ezekiel, you can kind of hear the thrashing um, ahead. Uh, I'll continue to swim towards it. Okay. Um, after a moment, Ellery comes out of the water as you see her there. And you can both now see ripples just under the surface of the water heading in your direction. I'm just going to take a defensive position, like kind of between Ellery and it, and just say, well, I can't say anything. I'm underwater. I'm just going to try and put myself between us, and I'll take the dodge action. Okay. And Ellery? Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just still heading up. Okay. So a moment later, Ellery, you burst into the surface. Ezekiel, you kind of sense where she is and dodging backward as well as it comes towards you. I just vanish because you have the top action. You feel something serpentine wrap around you or attempt to, um, but you quickly kind of shift and swim, swirling out of it before it kind of releases and pulls back a little bit, allowing you to come to the surface as well. Both you and Ellery are in the surface about halfway towards shore. I'll just kind of try and swim with her. I I won't go ahead of her. I will swim behind her uh, to shore. Both of you guys give me athletic checks. Please roll better this time. 
I definitely rolled better this time. That's a natural 20. I did not. I rolled a nine. Oh, okay. great. So, Ellery, you're swimming and you get to shore, huffing. You pull yourself up, turn around. Ezekiel is not to be seen. Ezekiel, you're grabbed and pulled underwater. You can feel it pulling deeper. Fuck. I'm diving back in after him. What are the rest of you guys doing? So you guys are up in the, the hallway. Oh, you know, having a panic attack. Okay. And Ezekiel, you're, you're pulled down and down further and further. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, this turn I get there, I, I'm gonna fucking waste it, but I'm turning into a giant constrictor snake and just saying no. Okay. Turning into a snake, your form now resembles what was wrapping around you. You can't quite fully see the end of it or a head or anything like that, but the girth of your form and whatever it is um, are about equal in this moment. It's still wrapped around you, but it's having a harder time grabbing on you. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make a escape grapple check. Athletics or acrobatics. Uh, okay. And in that form, it is better. So I got to find that sheet. Athletics. 14. Okay. You, you escape the grapple. And I'm just going to, like, go up. If I see Ellery on the way, I'm just going to kind of, like, I don't know. I don't know how to be not threatening in this form, but I'm going to try and get her to grab on. Okay. Does a 15 hit you? Yes. Okay. I am a huge creature, which... Oh, no, I guess my... If it's like me, then I don't have a size restriction. I don't have a size restriction on my restraint? That's nasty. <laughs> uh, so you take six points of piercing damage and make a constitution save for me. Oh, come on. Uh, you take 13 points of poison damage, and you're okay. currently poisoned. Great. But you're able to pull away from it. You kind of get to the surface. You can see Ellery kind of on the edge as you're swimming towards her. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Um, okay. Do, do I recognize this as the form that I see him take before? Uh, make a wisdom save for me. Okay. That's an eight. You see a serpent rushing towards you. So I'm scrambling back up out of the water and I guess prepping shock and grasp again for if it comes out after me. Okay. As you, you get towards the edge of the, the water, feeling slowed. But as you do, you see Ellery backing up, holding the lightning in her hands. Uh, I'm going to get rid of my poison with lay on hands and keep going. Avoiding her and like giving her that like cocked head to the side, like, really, bitch? Do you lay on hands in snake form? I mean, I just slap my tail against me. Okay. I don't know how I do it. I can do it. <laughs> so that sounds good. So you slap your you slap your body with your tail, and you're no longer poisoned. Um, and you get towards the you get on to shore now at this point. I look at her, and like hiss at the spider to make it come back for her, and I wait until she is up. Ellie, make another <laughs> athletic check at advantage. Oh, thank you. Oh. That's a 17. Okay. This time the, the spider is kind of helping you, and there's a rope that they've let down up, up top to where you're able to climb up and get into the hallway, leaving just Ezekiel. I will deform and ride my spider up. And okay. I have used both of my B-shapes on this stupid trek. <laughs> Athletics check at advantage to climb up. 23. Yeah. So the spider helps you get up and you climb as well. And you have all now made it to the top of the hallway. Thanks, Ezekiel. I'm looking them both over for injuries. No, I'm fine. So am I. Fucking snakes. I think that was a snake anyway. They like a snake. Well, we're almost there. Right, we must be getting close. Is it bad that I kind of want to go back down there and kill that thing? Uh, <sighs> yes, yes it is. I wasn't saying that I was suggesting that we go do that. I just want to. Okay. Well, I suppose we don't want to take an hour for me to get my wild shapes back, but I'll be fine. I'll think of something else. You sure? I don't want to hold this all up, but I mean, I guess we're not in a particular rush, if you don't mind. I don't mind. Fine. I will just 
casually rest while they all stand around. <laughs> we'll take uh, watch staring at Ezekiel. <laughs> while I dry <laughs> off. Okay. The hour goes by. Nothing nothing bothers you. <laughs> Uh, I know, I kind of didn't want to do this. <laughs> no, it's okay, you guys are in. That's a good position to do it. It may be dangerous in other places, but uh, you guys take a rest, or Ezekiel does, as you guys just kind of sit around. Uh, you are feeling very, very well rested after 12 hours of not moving, moving a little bit, and then resting up again after a short swim. You guys are able to follow the whole way down, turning just slightly before you see in the distance the stone doorway dropped. Now, I hope you all aren't thinking of doing anything silly like talking to this thing again and we can just progress with the murder because I'm done. Nah, I think we want to just kill this fucking thing. Yeah. <sighs> all right, well, I guess we can try and get up to the door as close as we can. I have to touch it in order, to, but I can... Asima has blessed me with a new way of getting rid of it, I think. It is just like a big stone slab. Okay. Yes. Uh, same plan as last time. I try and hit it with fire first before anybody actually goes into the chamber. Yeah, um, I'll I'll open the door and just try and get out of the way. Don't worry about hitting me. It'll give. I can take it. Uh, how big was the chamber again? From what I remember, it was fifty feet wide, and maybe Perfect. about I think twenty-five, thirty feet high. Perfect. Okay. See. So I guess we'll buff right before uh, uh, Ezekiel decides to make the door disappear somehow. Yeah, I'm gonna pop my wings before that. I'll lose a round on them, so that'll be our buff turn. Okay. Cool. All right. So creep up to the door. Uh, I'll cast Beacon of Hope on everyone. Okay. And uh, creeping up to the door is that sneaking up to the door? I mean, it's probably not gonna work, but we can try. Try. Okay. It's worth a shot. I guess since the rest of us are staying back, maybe I'll then I'll just buff. Um, I'll cast uh, protection from evil and good on Ellery while she goes and walks up to the door with uh, well, Ezekiel. I don't have to be close as long as I can see. So basically, Ball, you have to be behind her. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so maybe I'll cast protection from evil and good on um, Ezekiel instead. Yeah, I think we that's better. Get, I can call that we did not sneak. <laughs> A not natural one on Ezekiel's self. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, Ezekiel, cool. you've got protection from evil and good on you. Hope that helps. Come on, guys, let's sneak down there. Clank, 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 clank. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Ezekiel, let's. <laughs> we get Ezekiel. You want to murder, but let's try to be quiet. <laughs> yeah, so I'll pop my wings out right before I get to the door. Okay. And I will. Technically, on my next turn, place my hand against the stone door, grab my holy sim- or do I need my holy symbol or my staff? My staff, and say, spirits of stone, bend to my will, and cast stone shape, and just make it a hole. Okay. So, you put your hand against it, and then the stone bends to your will like water, curling back. Rushing like waves, slowly grinding away, revealing the inside. As you see tentacles writhing out of the water and begin lashing towards you. As that begins, Ellery, you're up first. Perfect. I would like to cast Fireball centered on the center of that chamber. Sure. Dex save. That is 19. So it will take half damage. 8d6, right? That's 7. And Vesper, you're on deck. One more. Okay. 15, 20, 24, 27, 30, 33. So half of 33. Okay. And are you staying where you are? Yes. Okay. So the ember flies over the shoulder of Ezekiel. Landing in the center of the tentacles, exploding into flames. You see the tentacles almost try to writhe around the flames. You see steam building up as it's covered in water. doesn't seem to have a large effect. It does seem to burn some of the tentacles, but not to a great extent as you would desire. That would bring us up to Vesper. Amson on deck. 
sorry, had a heart attack for a second. Didn't think I had. Oh, actually, at the end of Ellery's turn, you guys all hear something. Or hear? Is that the right term? You guys sense something in your mind, like static of noise or thoughts rushing through your heads. I need everyone besides Ball to make a intelligence saving throw. Awesome. Ball's not smart enough for this. Three. We fail. Uh, oh, that's an eight. Oh, you've got um, Ezekiel. You have protection from good and evil, so you can't be charmed, frightened, or possessed by aberrations, celestials, elementals, fey, fiends, and undead. I don't know if this counts. Just throwing that up there. Thank you. Uh, doesn't count against this one. So those who have failed, which is everyone besides Vesper and Ball, since he didn't have to make it, take twenty-seven points of psychic damage and are currently stunned repeating saves at the end of your next turns. So this flood of memory and thought overwhelms you all as you suddenly are stunned trying to can understand and comprehend everything that's rushing through your minds. Uh, that does bring us up to Vesper, though, who's unaffected. Perfect. Um, yeah. so the first thing I would like to do is... Yes, yes, wow. How do you guys do this? I'm going to cast it Spirit, Guardian, uh, Spirit Guardians. Obviously exempting my party. Okay. Um, and then I would like to... Is that a 30-foot radius? It says 15-foot radius. 15-foot right radius, yeah. Yeah, that's my turn for this one. I'm going to try and edge up, I think. Okay. I don't usually use full plenty, so I'm trying to move everything. So I'm going to yeah. just... It's a difficult edge. terrain to get through, Melly, but otherwise... I'm going to post up next to Ezekiel so that my guardians are now within range of the tentacles and everything. Okay. And that will bring us up to Amson. Make an intelligence saving throw at the end of your turn. Ugh. Uh, let's go with this die. Hey, that's better. That's a 17. Uh, you push yourself at the end of your turn out of the memory flood and push those thoughts away, recovering yourself. Um, but that is your turn. Uh, that will bring us up to the kelp, um, who is going to attack Ezekiel, seeing he is currently stunned. i remind myself on what that means. Stunned is incapacitated. Yeah. Incapacitated can't move ability to speak impaired but not lost. Automatically fail strength and deck saves. Attackers have an advantage. So you're not fully unconscious, but you're kind of currently stunned. So that is advantage. That's a natural 20 at advantage. Dealing. Oh boy. Oh boy, guys. Oh, um, this the, I think it's, uh, it's straight roll because it's got protection. Good oh, you're good. right. You're right. So that is the first roll was a 10. So 17 to hit. Miss. Okay. So the first slam misses, but roll for the second because of the spirit guardians. Lower. So it begins to strike towards the stunned Ezekiel, and there is this shimmer of silver light that almost bats the tentacles away as it tries to grab at him, failing both times. And that will bring us up to Melly. Oh boy. I'm gonna need uh I'm gonna need a Jaeger for Melly. Melly is gonna she have to get closer. She's going to get closer, but use Ray of Frost for now. Sorry, Klaus, did it have its turn? What's that? Did it have its turn? Yeah. It needed to make a wisdom save against okay. Mike. Okay, thank you. Uh, not good. Bad. Okay. Do we want to take the 14 that's there in the chat already? Or do you want me to roll again? That's fine. 14 is fine. As the spinning six-winged uh, creatures fly around, slashing into it, um, and Melly. Actually, roll a three or a natural twenty as Melee forms up ice, slinging it into the tentacle, and that will bring us up to Ball as I sort all that out. Um, well, since you guys are all stuck, <laughs> in frustration, Ball will first cast. Well, first he's just going to do Mantle of Flame uh, as his bonus action, and as his act as his action, he will cast. Bonus action, mental flame, and then action. He'll just do his Melf's meteor thing, Phoenix Phoenix shower. There, he can speak English. Um, so six balls of fire kind of float around me, and I kind of stand there. Balls try to see through to get a clearer um, hit, but can't really. Uh, I don't know. With twenty five move, is it half move to move through? Yeah, it's difficult terrain to move through your allies. Okay, so balls just gonna kind of feel stuck there and be trying to aim his meteors, but he can't, and that'll be the end of his turn. Okay. 
Um, and that'll bring us up to Ezekiel at the end of your turn. Could make an intel- intelligence saving throw. Five. You continue to be stunned. Bringing us back up to Ellery. Um, at the end of Ezekiel's turn, it is going to make a slam attack against Vesper. Uh, natural one. And Ellery. Okay. As you so. see the tentacles writhing against Ezekiel and Vesper. Intelligent saving throw? Um, are you still stunned? I believe so. You are, you are, yeah. So make an intelligent saving throw at the end of your turn. Okay. Oh, that's much better. That's a natural 20. Okay. You push your way out of it at the end of your turn. So that's your turn, but you're currently no longer stunned. Okay. Uh, Vesper, up to you. Okay. So I'm going to cast Spiritual Weapon right here beside it. Okay. For my bonus action. All right. Uh, 15? That hits. Hello. Yes, level two. So six force damage. Okay. And then with my bonus action, or with my action, uh, I want to cast Toll the Dead. Okay. Is that a con save on it? That is a wisdom save. So as the bow strikes out, it rolls not good. Yeah, three. Okay, which is... 2d12. That's the one thing that's not programmed into a one right now. So, 17. Uh, necrotic damage. But why? Because, uh, yeah. And then I'm Is going to edge into the room. So okay. I'm at a little bit more. So as the divine bow strikes into it, the wound created by the bow and from the burning from the uh, fireball before begin to wither as pieces of tentacle droop down, splashing into the water. That will bring us up to Amson, who's no longer stunned. All right, so for my action, I'm going to cast... How well can I see it? Uh, you can kind of see it there. Um, it would definitely have cover. I mean, it's fine. I'm going to cast Magic Missile. Okay. Yeah, you can target so, it. Cover doesn't matter. Um, just at first level. So that's okay. 3d4 plus 3. Which is nine points of force damage. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. The missile is two, two, two. And then because Ezekiel is stunned, I'm going to in- inspire him. And uh, Amson's going to sing, Thank you for saving me, for being a beast, to make monsters flee, for being so strong. With your shillelagh, thank you for saving me. Oh, for saving me. Nice. So as uh, Amson slings out the, the magic missile, slamming into the kelp, um, Ezekiel, you can just hear through the clutter a bit of a harmony. Um, at the end of your turn, it is going to strike out at Ezekiel. I no longer have protection from evil and good. Uh, Just a nine. Still not great. Uh, 16 dead. Miss. So it strikes towards you. But as you lean towards the side, swaying with the music, it slams into the wall right next to you. Um, And that will bring us up to its actual turn. Feeling the hurt from those... Make a wisdom save. It's starting in my... Is it starting? Okay. Uh, so that is a 12. Not going to do it. Uh, so another 14 of radiant damage. Okay. The herd is these divine creatures slice into it, swirling around Vesper. You can hear this um, groaning voice as you see the body being pulled up. Um, and as it does that, it's going to take all of its attacks against you, Vesper. The first one is a uh, 16 hit. Yeah, because I didn't say I had my shield up. I imagine I would have, but I didn't say it. So, yeah. Okay. That's it. So, that first one will hit. So, that's eight bludgeoning damage. Um, and you're currently grappled by the tentacle. Um, and the second one is a 13. I uh, will not hit. Okay. So, it tries to. Uh, Grapples you with one. Another tentacle, tentacle comes around. You duck just under it. Uh, that'll bring us up to Melly. He's going to move up and cast Burning Hands as she steps up, putting her thumbs together, releasing flames um, in the shape of wolves that rush over towards the kelp, searing it somewhat, though not to a great degree. And that'll bring us up to Ball. 
Well, this is fun. Um, I assume I can see it. Yeah. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to try to attack it with throw meteors at it. So okay. as a bonus action, I can expend one or two of the meteors. I will throw two of them, just kind of aiming behind it. So I don't hit, I, so I don't hit anybody. I can't see in the room. So I'm hoping that I'm not hitting Vesper here. Okay. Uh, natural one. I, again, for, I guess the two. Doing two. 17 on the second one. So the second one will be half damage, and I will work damage now. First one is nine damage, nine fire. Second one is four fire. Okay. And then, uh, I guess as an action, I'm just going to try to get in there. I don't think I even can. Can I? So if I use my action to dash, um, I have 50 feet of movement. Can I make it through here? I'll say you can. You can get right in between it and Ezekiel and Melly. If okay. you use your action to dash. So I will do that and just okay. get in its way. Okay. And that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. At the end of your turn, it's going to go ahead and take another attack at Vesper. He's grappled. Uh, that is not good. That's a nine. And that'll bring us up to Ezekiel. Let's go ahead and make an intelligence saving throw for me. Natural 20. Through. Yay. Also because you had to make made a natural 20, that'll happen at the beginning of your turn. Let's go ahead and take your turn. <laughs> It's fine. No. Okay. All right. She, All right. It'll kill you. Passed. It'll be great. All right. Uh, Ellen, we TPK. I'm going to remember this moment, Ezekiel. Yeah. So my a bad bitch. My no. first question is: Can I see past Ball well enough to get a spell in there? Uh, not great, actually. I mean, you know it's there, but you you can't really target it. Well, okay. Ball there. I'm not trying to target it yet. So just if I can if I can get my storm sphere in there. Uh Ball's because of his size, he's taking up basically the whole doorway. If Ball shifted, you could see over and into the ceiling, but he's taking up the whole doorway because the doorway's only about eight feet tall or so. Uh, at, as a point, I could have only affected a five foot cube of it, so it's even smaller. So it's kind of a tiny hole. Oh, I thought you took the whole thing out. Well, here we are. Shoot. And Vesper, you're on deck. Is, do I have enough movement to squeeze in past Ball? You'd have to dash. You could get in there if you dash, though. Yeah, at least that... Oh, then I'm in range of it to hit me. You know, I'm going to try. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to dash to get past Ball. And I guess... So that that takes me 35 feet, I think, if I was counting that correctly. 35 or 40? Uh, I think 40. Okay, so I'm going to keep going. Uh, 19 did you? Hello? Yeah. Okay. You take 12 bludgeoning damage and are currently grappled. Oh, I'm grappled? Great. Let's see what hit you right there. Okay. Well, I did not think that through. Still, I'm going to go ahead and cast my Storm Sphere right in the middle. As a bonus action using sorcery points. And it has to make a strength saving throw. Right. Uh, That is a natural 15. uh, 19. Yeah. So it doesn't take any damage yet. But so this sphere will take up most of the chamber. It'll leave five feet around the edges to move around in. Okay. Okay, then. And yeah, we'll just keep that in mind. the inside of it is difficult terrain. Got it. Okay, so that's going to put everyone but maybe Vesper in the territory, unless you move it down. Uh, I'll move it down then, yeah. Okay. Okay, so not a little south of center, keeping you out, but it, in it. At the end of your turn, it's going to go ahead and... Strike against you, Ellery. That is 13. Uh, 13 does not hit. Okay. So um, it tries to pull you towards the center of it, but you kind of grab on and dig your heels into the ground, preventing it from pulling you down. That will bring us up to Vesper. As you see this storm sphere swirling around, uh, wind and lightning crackling. First, I'm going to use my bonus action to try and hit it with the spiritual weapon. Sure. 13? Uh, that will miss. Okay. And then if I try and attack it 
with a touch attack if I'm being grappled by it. Will that still have disadvantage? Even though it's touching me. Grapple uh, doesn't I... inflict disadvantage. That's restraint. Oh, okay. okay, great. Yeah, you so I would love to cast inflict wounds on it. At... Okay. So you, you, you try to hold this withering energy and straining against it, but it constricts and pushes you up against the wall as you lose the spell. Okay, it was going to be a second level, so I'm going to put down. That might be my turn. Okay. At yeah. the end of your turn, it's going to try to engulf you, pulling it towards its, its center. Uh, can I use portent? Sure. Uh, it rolls a natural three. Okay. So as it pulls Vesper towards it, it slips its grip as if you fall into the ground. It quickly grapples you with another tentacle, but it uh, it would have rolled a 19 and you would have been inside of it. Don't like that. Uh, Amso, up to you. Oh, boy. So you see this thing has grappled both Ellery and Vesper balls in its, in its face and is trying to pull them into it. I cannot see inside this room very well. Uh, there's a storm basically in this tiny room. Yeah. Lovely. So I'll move kind of up behind Melly, just to try to get a little bit of a better view. Not that I can. I don't want to drop Beacon of Hope yet, because that'll be really nice and around when we have to start healing. Can I see it enough to cast Vicious Mockery? Not really. With Ezekiel and Ball there? Okay. I'm going to say it's like 99% covered. Then in that case, I'm going to... I'll just take the dodge action. Okay. And mm -hmm. I'll just chill there and I'll use my reaction for things. Okay. So that brings up to it starting in the thing. Wisdom save. That's actually a 17. Uh, it just went up. Let me make sure. Hang on. Yeah, that'll save. Okay. It also has to make another strength save since it's in the yeah, sphere. The turn against the storm. 22. Yeah. So the wind is, is rushing the water around and splashing onto the sides. Um, but it's a, it's anchored deep in this uh, well and it's not being pulled. It is going to, it's going to try to take in Vesper. So it's going to take one attempt there. Uh, can I cut in words that? Yeah. All right. Uh, here's the eight. Ah, uh, that's a one. Uh, so that takes a 17 to a 16. That'll still hit me. Okay. My AC is a 15. So it grapple. Oh, again. it does still take half damage on Spirit Guardian. Thank okay. you. Okay. Yeah, half damage on that? Seventeen to have whatever. Yeah. Still cutting into it. It feels the that pain as its divine energy is uh, striking into it. It takes the wrapped tentacle around Vesper, lifts her up into the air, and pushes towards its center. This uh, mass of kelp-like tentacles pulling you in. It slowly engulfs you, surrounding you by plant matter. Vesper, you are currently engulfed. You are grappled, blinded, restrained, unable to breathe. Uh, um, can I take a breath before I go in? Seeing yeah. that I'm about to have a assume, break. Assumed you, yeah, assumed you do. Um, but yeah, you're pulled in and can no longer breathe in additional air. Um, so that's the okay. first strike, and it's going to go um, and slam Valerie. That is a 15. No. Okay. So it tries to, holding you still, try to, with another tentacle, slam down on top of you, but you're able to push against it, um, getting yourself some as it slams onto the water-filled uh, side walkway there. It is going to now uh, move you basically into it, and uh, it'll stay there, actually. I'm going to set the Melly. Um, didn't realize there wasn't a doorway there. I don't know what Melly can do, to be honest with you guys. She's not. A combat base entity. Uh, She's furiously scribbling notes about this creature. Yeah, she doesn't really have a good shot on it uh, either way. So she's going to stay there and just be prepared to shift out and try to get a better grasp on this thing. That'll bring us up to... Actually, at the end of its turn, it's going to go ahead and take a strike against Ball. Uh, that's a 15-digit Ball? Uh, nope. Okay. So it strikes against you, but you quickly bat it away, and that brings up to you. Okay. Is there an advanced Vesper? Ball is going to... Actually, that uh, changes things. Ball will five foot step to his his left, to there. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to take his first... He's just going to start attacking it. So his first attack with his only glaive as a, the Phoenix Blade. Uh, 25. Oh yeah, that'll hit. 
for 12 slashing plus 8 fire. I don't know exactly what happens if I don't have a secondary target. Does it have to hit one of my allies? No, I'll say you can, if there's a free space, you can just make the flames rush into the air. Okay, so 8 fire, and then I will put a smite into it. Uh, Fourth level smite, because fuck this guy. Extra 31 radiant. It is now starting to look pretty rough as Ball just hacks into this thing with flaming and light glaive slicing through three of the kelp tentacles that fall to the ground, withering under the divine light. And then Ball's going to, with his bonus action, throw two meteors, aiming at kind of, like, trying to hit the, the tentacles that are holding Ellery up, but without trying to hit Ellery. It's sure. within five feet. I don't know how that's going to go, if, if it hits Ellery or not. And then it is a dex save. So that's a nine dex save. And, you and then for the second two. Yeah. Uh, second one is a 19. Okay, so same thing as last time. First one will be full, second one will be half. So eight fire damage for the first one, four fire damage for the next one. As notice, as you're bombarding it with flames, it is resisting that fire to some degree, though it still is burning and slowly withering it back. Uh, starting to look pretty rough at this point. And that'll be the end of my turn. Okay. And that will bring us up to Ezekiel. All right. Finally, shaking out of my stupor and seeing the flames not work, I'm going to look at it. Actually, tossing staff to the ground because I need a hand and wave my fingers and ask the spirits of fire to amplify damage. And it has to make a con save. Versus uh, Elemental Bane. That is a dirty 12, or a natural 12, uh, 15 total. It fails. Okay. So with Elemental Bane, the first time each turn, it takes fire damage. It takes an extra 2d6 damage. It also loses any resistance to that damage type until the spell ends. Okay. What does this look like as you, as these flames, um, they're just kind of smoldering and steaming up on the pieces and they burst? I think Ezekiel's eyes will flash red, and there's just this light that emanates from him that kind of settles on the creature, almost like giving it this red sheen. Okay. Yeah, this burning gaze from Ezekiel as the flames sputtering begin to build up once more. And I'll just say, it. light it up. At the end of your turn, it's going to take a strike on Ellery. That's a 19 to hit you, Ellery. This time I remember the fact that I have shield, and I cast shield, and it does not hit. Okay. So it again tries to pull you in with Vesper, but you're able to um, use this arcane shield to deflect the tentacle back. You're still grappled, but uh, prevent yourself from being engulfed. And that will bring us up to you, actually. Okay. So I am going to. First, as my bonus action, make a strike with lightning from the center of the sphere. And because it's in the middle of the storm, I get advantage on that. Sure. It's a 26 to hit. Hit. And let me see what I'm rolling for that. 16 points of lightning damage. And as my action... I'm going to go ahead and bring down another fireball centered right where the sphere is centered. Sure. Um, bad. Deck save. Six. All right. Ten, twenty, twenty-seven, twenty-eight 27, 28 points of fire damage. Did that include your extra 2d6? No, that did not. So he doesn't have that, and he gets additional... So that's just another two. So as you call the lightning from the storm, it slams into the middle of the body. Immediately, it like pulses. The energy immediately disperses and two kelp tentacles immediately regrow. And you can see the pulsing energy kind of drawing um, into it, invigorating it further. Just as it begins to look more healthy, immediately a fireball slams onto it, explodes, burning away. And the gaze of this ember burning gaze of Ezekiel enables the burning embers to burn in further. A few more tentacles drop. Uh, it's starting to look very rough at this point. Is that it for you, Ellery? Seeing that 
Oh, I'll I'll go ahead and leave the storm sphere up since I don't really have a reason to drop it. But I'm I don't think I'm going to use lightning on it next time. Okay, that will bring us to Vesper at the top of your turn. Make a Constitution saving throw as it is squeezing you within it. Oh boy! Oh boy! Howdy! Hmm. Nine. So you take eleven bludgeoning damage as it squeezes you within there. So you you can try to escape, but you're otherwise blinded, grappled, restrained, unable okay. to breathe. So that uh, keeps up my spirit guardians. Um, with my bonus action, I'm going to focus on the bow and try and hit it again. Okay. Yes. Is that it? Uh, for four force damage, not very good. Okay. Um, and then with my action, I'm going to try and get out. Okay. Make an acrobatics or an athletics check. Acrobatics for sure. Fourteen. So you try to pull yourself out of it, but it's too strong as it immediately squeezes you back into its center. Oh, um, I hate to ask this, but does Vesper have to make a strength save against the bludgeoning from the storm? Or uh, is she... Or some fire. I'm saying she's inside of it, so it's not going to affect okay. her. That's why I mean, I she might have. be tossed around, but she's inside, so okay. she's, I'll say she's cushioned and protected by the fire. I was hoping you would say that. So she's inside. Okay. Yeah. So at the end of Vesper's turn, it's going to make a strike against Ellery. Uh, not good. It tries to sling at you again, and you're able to keep ducking and moving and shifting under it. Uh, that will bring us up to Amson. Okay. So I'm going to move up kind of beside Melly and a little bit into the room. Can I see any part of Vesper at all? Uh, no, she's completely engulfed. Okay. I was hoping that would not be the case, but since that is, um, instead, I am going to cast a firebolt at the creature. Okay. Um, so that is one of these things. That's a nat 20. Oh, yeah. All right. So that's... We're double in. damage. D10. This is a dice. And then plus you also double. That's amazing. I think. Okay. Uh, I need yep. a couple more D10s. Hold on. That spells. That spells really good. Yeah. It relies on that con save, which monsters tend to be pretty decent at, but yeah, it's it nasty. Pretty decent at. But... All right. So I have 4D10 and 4D6. Oh, boy. This is going to be hopefully crazy. This will decide if it's going to escape or not, or attempt to escape or not. Okay. Those are some okay rolls on the D10s. Let's do the D6s. Okay. 14, 15, 20, 25 points of fire damage. So as the firebolt slams into it, it burns away two of the tentacles and then into the core. You can start to see this knot of kelp in the very center where it's starting to be revealed. You can see a few of the other tentacles that were writhing along the walls, um, stretching out, just kind of drop um, and fall to the ground as this thing is wavering. The pulsing light inside of the kelp begins to wither. There's only a few lights remaining in uh, a few of the tentacles and in the core itself. You can see Vesper's form or silhouette inside pushing and straining against it. This thing is on its last leg. Anything else for you, Amson? Uh, unfortunately, I do not have a good bonus action thing to do. So instead of that, I'm going to use a second level healing word on myself to heal myself for 11 hit points as Beacon of Hope. So it is at the end of its turn going to burst out um, in a flood of memories flashing yours and others. Um, it's hard as they're all mixing up together. All of you make a intelligence saving throw. The start of its turn or the end of Amps? At the end of Amson's turn. Uh, 16 for me. 13 for Ball. 7 for Ezekiel. I mean, I'll try it. Ooh. 12. I can use luck. That's much better. 17. Okay. Um, so, who got 14 or um, lower? 14. Okay. Can I use... Bend luck to give Ezekiel. Is Ezekiel was kind of on the cusp of things, I think. Well, it's yeah, 13. My... Ezekiel is 12. And I think it's a, it sounds like it's a 14 or higher. 
Yeah, to to give you a one d four bonus to that. All right. Okay. I want to give it all because Ezekiel's not doing the yeah. meta table talk, but Ezekiel's not going to make it. He's one to d four. Yeah, okay. I, I'll get. I think I need a fifteen, so I need at least a three. But Vesper or Ball might. Oh, you can't see Vesper, so Ball. Go yeah, for okay, ball. so Ball. That's very meta. Okay. We shouldn't have done that, but still. <laughs> Uh, that's three. Um, so with that, Ball would have a 16. Yes, and Ball, you're okay. So, Ellery, what did you roll? Was it a 16. 15. Okay, so you're fine. Vesper, you're stunned, and you take 12 points of psychic damage. Amson. Okay, so Amson is good. Hell, he's fine. So Ball's fine, and Ezekiel, you take 12 points of psychic damage, and are stunned. Uh, so that's the end of Amson's turn, and at the beginning... Elemental Bane's dropped. Okay. Your guardians are not. Yeah, so it makes a five wisdom save. Yeah, no. And it needs to make a strength save still. Uh, I made 18 on that. Okay. So 11 radiant damage. So inside of this creature, how do you want to do this? The angels, I think, kind of close in around it, and all of them begin cutting into it and basically, like, pull Vesper out. And leave yeah. the husk to fall into the water. Okay. And as they're cutting in through the tentacles into this knot, this core of leaved kelp, there's a moment where they're pulling a, a Vesper out, who's kind of drooped, arms outstretched. I mean, you can see the wings of these ethereal spirit guardians almost form, or appear to be wings behind Vesper as they pull her out and onto the side of the walkway as the rest of the tentacles drop into the water and slowly begin to sink. The last few pulses flickering of yellow light before it fades completely, leaving just this raging storm of crackling lightning um, and a few spirit guardians remaining for a few moments. And I will drop that storm. Ah, fuck that thing. My head hurts. My everything hurts. My ears bleeding? Uh, yeah, a little bit there. I could use... Some healing, if somebody has some to offer. Yeah, give me a second to orient myself. Okay. I'm gonna lean over the pit and spit. Uh, if you're quick, Beacon of Hope is still up. Yep, I would love to heal, um, I think, is Ellery the worst? Uh, off, I think. Ellery's pretty bad. Ezekiel might be worse, I'm not sure. If I can get both of them with two rounds, basically, I can do my healer feat. Which is good. It's good. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you should be able to. I think that was only like plus. five rounds. Cool. So that is, um, Jesus, I can barely read this screenshot. Six plus nine, I believe, plus, yeah, six plus nine hit points restored. So 15 back to each of you. I Thanks. believe it's also, it's a D6 plus four because the maximum oh, okay. is, ten, so it's 19. So 19 back to each of you, right. So that Vesper is a lot better. Patching you guys up, Ezekiel, as you spit, the kind of bloody spittle drops into the water and kind of disperses, sinking. As you can see, the well is pretty deep. Those last few pulses of the kelp is slowly drifting down towards the um, bottom. What I wanted to do, but I just didn't want to interrupt, is that, like when this kelp fades, Ball wants to kind of just grip out and grab one of the tentacles. And maybe while this healing's going on, he's kind of just starts trying to pull it out. Uh, sure. I'd like to kill myself for that as well. Just uh, give me an athletics check, Paul, as you kind of grab one of the slipping tentacles and begin pulling it. Uh, 22? Yeah, you pull the mass kind of out of the water slowly, dragging it back up by the tentacle, pulling it up towards the edge, at least the main mass of it. The tentacles are even growing all over these walls, the smaller ones, but the main husk of it is now at your feet. The light um, is now fade. You know, once I've done that, Paul's just going to basically... He's going to use his, um, he doesn't really use it much, the ability to kind of ignite things. At first level, I can um, start fires with a touch, and Ball's basically just going to start trying to burn its remains. Okay. Pulling it up on the side, beginning the fire. Because of how wet it is, this kelp, it takes a little while, but you can eventually dry it out enough to where it'll start to catch. It'll take maybe at least 10 minutes to get that going, though. Hey, Ezekiel. Yeah? Did you... Get your memory back? No. 
No. I think that's gone. But oh, shit. It's just a few days. At least it won't happen again. Part of me is curious what's down there. Down in the water? A little bit. I would also like to make sure that the waters are no longer defiled. I can go down and check it out. Do you need to rest first? No. I should be fine. I'll toss myself a few lay on hands, but I'm going in beach form, so I'll be fine. If he's going to do it, then Ball will cast protection from good and evil on him before he goes. Just have to check senses on my water forms. Uh, all right, I'll step up onto the edge of the well. As I'm falling in, I will turn into a pearlback tortoise. One of the ones where I almost died trying huh. to help. <laughs> yeah, blood in the water episode, whatever that was. As this turtle drops in, the rest of you see the back of it is almost mirrored in this pearlescent shell. As it drops in, as you go into the water, it is dark and you heard something. Uh, I, w- I was just going to say as he's going in, uh, you know, if Ezekiel hadn't insisted on giving a memory himself, I was going to offer up the memory of the Pearlbacks to get us past this thing. And as yep. Ellery says that, the Ezekiel turtle swims down into the dark, cool waters 10, 20, 30, 40 feet down. And what kind of senses do you have? Do you have dark vision or blind sense or anything? I do have dark vision. Okay. So you can kind of see about 50-ish feet down. You can start to see the end where you can see the tentacles go down this far. And they seem to coalesce around something at the very bottom. It's hard to see because there's tentacles or kelp now dead um, around it, but there's something in the middle of them that you have to clear out. All right, I'll go over there and start biting away the kelp. Biting away, pushing through. There's something in the center, and it is wafting in the water left to right, gently drifting. And it is a purplish, violet, amethyst color of nearly glowing pink, crystalline structure in the shape of a plant. It's strange. It moves and looks, resembles a plant with these the tendrils similar to the form above. And yet it's made of this either glass or crystalline gemstone. You see it's gently glowing uh, a violet pink color. And how far down am I at this point? Uh, you're about 60 feet. It's on, it's on the lowest section of this well. And it's about the size of maybe a soccer ball. Okay. I do not necessarily want to touch this with me, so I'm going to uh turn back into me at the bottom of the well take off my cloak and use that to kind of like put it over it and then try and scoop it up without having to put my like hands on it sure so you put the cloak over it scoop it up and it seems to be semi attached to the bottom but not hard as you pull it slightly and it kind of breaks off and you have this whatever it is this crystalline plant um in your pouch all right and I'll Swim up real quick before I drown. Comes to the surface. At this point, the room is beginning to fill with smoke from Ball being able to put the core knot, this creature, slowly beginning to be set on fire. And I'll come out and just kind of shake off, or well, gently. I don't want it to necessarily shatter right away, um, but lay out my cloak so they can see what I found. And you guys see this strange gemstone glass crystalline plant. And it seems to, even when you take it out of the water, it seems to maintain its form. This plant-like structure that's gently shifting as if wind is blowing it. Weird. I wonder who put this down here. And Divine Sense gets what? Fiends undead? It's Um, Celestial celestial Fiends fiends undead. 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 It's none of that. Um, I also detect the presence of any object, place or object that has been consecrated or desecrated. Uh, It's not that either. It's beyond those definitions, whatever it is. I do not know what this is either. I'm seeing that one. Maybe you guys can take a look, and I'll help and see if it's something natural. Yeah, sure. I'm going to use Arcana. That okay. makes sense. Yeah, make an Arcana see if I check on Roll with advantage, because Melly's going to help you. Okay, good, because that was a terrible roll. 
I can use luck. <laughs> oh my gosh. Five, four, four. Uh, so I'm going to use the best roll because it's advantage. And so that's a 12. Okay. It's, it's living, whatever it is, as weird as it is to say that because it's made out of either gemstone or glass, but it seems to be living. It seems to have a nervous system. And again, as weird as it is, it's a nervous system of non-organic matter. Or maybe it is. You're not sure what this thing is. There's no runes on it. There's no glyphs to read. It seems to be some sort of living creature of what kind you're not sure. And there was nothing I could get from a nature check. 16. I'll say you, you get it's also living. And it seems if you kind of poke it or anything like that, it reacts to it. Not quite with high intelligence sentience, but it seems to be a living creature. How it's living or why doesn't make any sense, but it seems to be a living creature, as far as you can tell. And Millie, what do you think it is? Uh, she was helping Amson, and she's oh, not here so. <laughs> Trying to trick Klaus into doing the voice. She's not sure. Do we want to take it back or just crush it here? I assume it is what caused that thing, but... Or it might be. It might be that thing, in a sense. If we hang on uh, to it and bring it back with us, I can check it out in the morning with a spell. It's a bit more encompassing than just the natural sort of thing that you can all pick up on. Uh, not only because Melly isn't here, but also Hampson is curious. Uh, I'll speak on behalf of both of them and say that we should keep it in order to study it and figure out what it is. <sighs> Fine, you help me kill it, and I'll let you keep the thing. And if it's part of this monster, we'll destroy it. Thank but you. Better to be safe than sorry. No, it's fine. I know you like to poke at things. As <laughs> anyway, if you don't like to poke at things. Well, in different ways. <laughs> <laughs> and let's go. Okay. <laughs> Do we go back the, through the staircase or the way we came? The stone door was deeper and we gotta go the other way. Right. So this the staircase. The one that we went down on that I yes. did the the little sharp things down? Yeah. Okay. So Ball will say to be careful for those. Right. Okay. Um, so as you guys kind of gather this, whatever this thing is, um, and yourselves, and you begin to go up the spiral staircase, being sure to avoid any of the, whatever those things are called, the Legos, the mean Legos, uh, you guys get to the top and kind of re-enter where the viaduct is. If you remember the rats and whatever those people were that you saw. And as you kind of get up there and prepare to exit the rest of the way, we're going to go ahead and uh, pick back up next week. Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. We also have a YouTube channel called Back to the Story, an actual play podcast. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, or behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash backtothestory.